Good morning and welcome to our act of worship. Today we're celebrating care homes. More than 400,000 older men and women live in residential settings. That's 4% of the population. About 40% of those are receiving specialist dementia care. Of course, since the start of the pandemic, care homes have been much in the news. A high proportion of deaths from coronavirus have been among older people, particularly those in residential care. Our thoughts and prayers are for the bereaved and for staff, those key workers under such pressure. Today we think of all who are suffering as a result of the virus, as each of us tries to pick up the threads of normal life. And we'll celebrate what's being done to keep people in care connected to church, to draw on their faith at this time. Our service begins with the hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I'm speaking to you from Alton in Hampshire where the way of supporting older people known as Anna Chaplaincy first began. It's named after the widow Anna who appears with Simeon in Luke's Gospel, both of them fine role models of faithful older people. Today's Anna Chaplaincy is for everyone in later life, whether they go to church or not. Part of the Bible Reading Fellowship, BRF, Anna Chaplaincy offers spiritual care to people in the community, whether they're living in care or independently. What we mean by spiritual care is offering time for people to talk about life's big questions, to tell their stories and make better sense of their lives, to have their souls nurtured. This spiritual accompaniment is a person-centred, non-judgmental process of being alongside the other person, listening and affirming their life experience. It is an immense privilege, but also a demanding role that requires love and commitment. In today's service, we'll hear from older people and their Anna chaplains in different parts of the country. First, though, let us say sorry to God for those times when we have let him down. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, 
in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Luke chapter 2, the story of Simeon and Anna, and it's read for us by Canon Dr Erica Roberts, who leads the Anna Chaplaincy team supporting care homes in Southampton. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Before the March lockdown, this team was coordinating indoor sessions for about 30 people, using a variety of craft materials and prayers, similar to Messy Church, but geared specifically for older and isolated people, meeting face to face. It was a variant of what we call Messy Vintage, which is also offered around the country in some care homes. Now they're putting together packs for posting or delivering to people at home. They focused on themes like the sea or sleep. Um, I think some people just really love, love it coming through the door. A package mm. with, with what does it start with? A tea bag, Chris. Well, quite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good place to start. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, we've also put in a lavender bag. Yeah. Yay, yeah, lavender. Yeah. Soporific. Yeah. <laughs> this autumn, the theme is harvest containing puzzles, a colouring page, prayers, a Bible story and small gifts, demand has grown so much they now prepare 120 packs each time, a fourfold increase since the pandemic began. Nevertheless, these months have proved frustrating for the team. We were going to have a tea dance to celebrate VE Day, and of course that hasn't happened, and, and just so many things like that that were planned and sadly just haven't come to fruition. What about your care home ministry? The care home ministry has been really difficult because obviously actually since just before lockdown in March the care homes stopped all visits and so we haven't been able to visit them at all. We've kept in touch by phone and by sending um, prayer cards so that the carers in the home can um, use the prayer cards 
with older people so that you know they can pray with them they can read little extracts from the bible to them but yes i haven't been into a care home since the middle of march some care homes seem to be organizing garden visits now but um what's going to happen in the winter i don't know what impact do you think this is having on people living with dementia it just must be so confusing and so isolating to not have the people that they're used to having around them be there. So it, it must be having a very negative effect on those living with dementia. Before becoming a priest, Erica was a children's cancer specialist. She described what the recent months have been like. I've been really fortunate, I've been invited in a couple of times to care homes, which I think is unusual. Uh, but I was invited in to do end-of-life spiritual care, which was a real, it's always a privilege, it's always a privilege. Uh, but it was um, particularly special to, to do it, even in PPE, with a member of family and, and the older person who was reaching the end of her life. And then I went in and took Holy Communion to uh, a resident who particularly requested it. Um, one care home manager, who I hope we will meet later, um, is particularly insightful. She said, you are a professional. We invite our district nurses in, so why wouldn't we invite you in to do spiritual care? I just wish that all our care home managers had such um, important insights. So we're going to work on that and, and see how we can improve our connections over these coming months. Debbie Girling on the right is an Anna chaplain in Spark Hill, Birmingham. She and her volunteer Anna friend Dot Pooler, who works with her, were at last year's annual gathering of about 75 people who minister among older people, held at High Lee in Hertfordshire. They told us how their ministry encompasses a local nursing home, with regular services attracting up to a dozen people each time, many of whom are living with dementia. Debbie reads our lesson from Philippians, chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To support care staff and help them provide spiritual care in the absence of church pastoral visitors, BRF has produced a series of five booklets called A Carer's Guide. Some churches are buying editions in bulk and making gifts of them to their local care homes. We followed Erica as she was allowed into Lawnbrook Care Home in Southampton to see a resident and delivered a set of booklets to Marie, the manager, and care assistant Joanne. Oh, it's one of my favourite people. Whilst you're here, because I yeah. know you are busy, yeah. um, we're, as you know, we're trying to think about ways that we can support yeah. the residents and the, your carers yeah. um, spiritually in the care homes. So it's such a difficult time and we're I so know. grateful yeah. for what you're all doing for Joan and, and for others. Um, so uh, the Bible Reading Fellowship and the Anna Chaplaincy have put together some carers Carer, guides. Okay. So because we can't come, it says how you could worship. So for instance, if you thought, well, I don't quite know what to do with Joan, you could take this and think it's got some prayers in there. Mm -hmm. Are you stressful? How to take <laughs> care of yourself in stressful times? Uh, well, I'll End be... of life care. Yeah. How to have a memorial service okay. at home, although I would love to come and help you well, with that when we, we can. Need, we need. Okay, it's important as well to uh, hear word of God, um, especially in this difficult time. So it will lift up our spirit as well. Um, especially with the resident that they don't see their families. So for them to hear word of God, it helped them. How is it for you at the moment? Very hard work. It's really hard trying to cope at the moment. But the most important thing is to lift the spirits of the residents and staff alike. Yes. And with Erica and the church, it's, it's a really good job. It's a really good job. And I hope that the booklets, the Carers Guide series, will be really helpful for you because it's really explaining spiritual care. And when we can't be here, you can be. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm looking forward to going through with the residents. And I've yourself, how have you been in your own spirits I've these last few months? It's been difficult, it's been a challenge, but coming here every day and seeing you know, the residents happy to see you, it's nice, it's uplifting. And with knowing that you have people behind you, Eric, not forgotten, it's nice. Enable us to sow seeds of peace and hope into the lives of those we speak to this week. Thank you for your faithfulness to us in every season of life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Joan, can I just ask you, what does it mean to you to have a church service, have some prayers brought to you in this way? Oh, that means everything. Yes. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a strengthening somehow. And um, I couldn't do without my faith. It means everything to me. Joan Wedge was born in Felixstowe and lived in Suffolk most of her life. Recently, she's moved to be nearer her son. And I, just, I just said to my son the other day, why am I here? And he said to be looked after and uh, you couldn't look after yourself anymore. Joan has arrived at Lawnbrook only two months ago, so it's been a strange season, hasn't it? Because not only have we had coronavirus, but you've also changed your home too. Yes, yeah. My house has been sold. <laughs> yes, it's so strange. So my possessions, if you like to call them that, have been distributed among the family. <laughs> That's um, a funny feeling, really. Mm. <laughs> we went on to chat about how the seeds of her faith were sown in childhood. 
who had taught her to pray. Because my mother was the oldest of five in the family. Yeah, yeah. Four girls and a boy in the middle. <laughs> and uh, no, it was my auntie Kath. Oh. And it was, you know, the, the child's prayer, God bless mummy, God bless daddy. Yeah. <laughs> But that's how it begins, isn't it? Yeah. They're the best prayers. <laughs> yeah. Erica has founded a local charity called Caraway to celebrate the wisdom and richness of old age. Working alongside those with and without faith in Southampton and beyond. She's in no doubt about the vision. Oh, to have um, a network of Anna chaplains um, across all the different communities who can work within the different contexts, and each context is different as we, as we know, to connect with older people in the community, um, to engage with the churches, to see how valuable a resource the older person is. Uh, but I would like to see every older person having access to an Anna chaplain, um, both so that they feel valued and so that we can use the rich resources that our older community have to offer us. We've always known the word church encompasses many more people than happen to congregate in a church building. The fact that people living in care can also worship, thanks to the teams of people who regularly visit care homes and lead such worship, testifies to that. But with the onset of coronavirus, those worshippers have been denied the sorts of services they might have grown accustomed to, the ones taking place in the lounge, other people being brought home communion, say, in their room if they can't walk or are confined to bed. We have one Anna Chaplin who regularly rings individuals in her local care home. Elizabeth Bryson in Maidstone in Kent conducts a mini service with one person after another on the phone. She's been doing this throughout the health crisis. She's helped by an activities coordinator who takes a mobile phone from person to person, carefully sanitising it between each one, I'm sure, while Elizabeth reads them a Bible passage, sings a short hymn, she's very unselfconscious about that, 
She offers prayers and thanksgivings to God and includes any personal prayers that a resident might want said for someone who's especially on their hearts that day. It is a hugely rewarding ministry, she says, and it's time consuming as she might reach 20 individuals in a single day, carefully repeating God's word and making it special, unique to that person on that day. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had worship that day or on any day. We're all having to adapt to new circumstances, and that means people who are often in the older age bracket themselves are learning how to conduct a service via Skype or on Zoom rather than face to face. Or they're recording a short thought for the day and posting it on YouTube for the home to select and show at a convenient time in the care home day. Ironically, many more people might be seeing such filmed conversation starters, such as the ones on topics like hugs, the seaside, anxiety and prayer, recorded by an 80-year-old Anna Chaplin who specialises in ministry among those living with dementia. Since they've appeared on the web, she's being viewed by many more people than she'd ever have reached by visiting the dementia wing of her local care home and meeting up with the typical eight to 10 people she normally sees on a weekly basis. These women and men who are becoming Anna Chaplins are what you might call the present day Annas and Simeons, people who are seeing with the eyes of God, who spot the people who are on the margins, reading the signs of the times, just as Simeon and Anna did that day in the temple, when God disclosed to them that that young couple, looking like so many others through the doors day after day, they were the ones carrying the Messiah. And this was an extraordinary day in history, the history of the whole world. The Saviour had come in the form of a helpless, tiny baby. Let's never forget how God uses the seemingly weak to teach us things. In Luke's account, Simeon utters his famous prayer, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes hath seen your salvation. And it is Anna, the prophetess, the one who's so good at spotting those hovering just on the edge of sight and drawing them in. She it is who steps into the limelight and speaks of God's love, of the redemption of Israel that was to set in train the redemption of each one of us. She not only speaks good news, she does something about it. There in the shadows of the temple precincts on the fringes of society. No wonder we picked the name Anna for this work among older people and their carers, who often feel overlooked and forgotten, and who at this time in our contemporary history have borne the brunt of a disease which in some cases ought never to have been brought close to them. Infection to which they should not have been exposed. But this is not the place to point the finger of blame. We shall all learn to handle such a virus better in future. We must improve conditions for older people in care so they can be supported and remain connected to other people and to those aspects of life which bring meaning and purpose to their lives. For many people in care, that includes faith, the articulation of their spirituality, which makes their life feel worth living. We have all learned over recent months when deprived of company, how much our loved ones matter to us. How sad it is when people are alone for long periods and feel acute loneliness. Our hearts ache for families meeting through fences, relatives and residents separated on health grounds. We applaud the pastoral care that's seen church services taking place in care home gardens, under gazebos. There have been other ingenious ways of keeping in touch, apart from letters and cards. Doorstep pop rounds. I know one Anna Chaplin who takes a shooting stick with her and perches outside someone's house for a chat. Another effectively patrols the fence of a care home when out walking, saying she daren't miss her daily walk because she finds residents waiting there just in case she passes by. The residents are desperate for someone to talk to. The onset of winter, of course, presents more challenges. 
We trust that where there is love and concern, these challenges will be surmountable. One of the saddest things I heard recently was a minister telling me how he'd rung a parishioner who was home alone, shielding herself from the virus, and she'd said to him, will I ever see another human being again before I die? This conversation had a profound effect on him, and he had joined one of our Zoom conference calls in order to hear more about what resources are available for ministering to older people through the pandemic. We had 97 people enroll for that Zoom conference, all of them wanting to know more. Some eager to share their novel ideas and good practice. There is a real appetite for more ministry among the old, and in particular among those living in care homes. God is raising up the right people, volunteering for such ministry, many of them in what we describe as the older age category themselves. We have 150 Anna chaplains right across the country, and counting. They're dotted in places from Orkney to the Channel Islands, in Wales, in the Midlands, the South West, on the South Coast, in the North West and North East. And initiatives like ours and others, Embracing Age, Faith in Later Life, Linking Lives UK, the Salvation Army, the Pilgrim's Friends Society, to name but a few, have all come together to be part of a coalition called Christians Together Against Loneliness. We are all part of a movement working to ensure that fewer people are overlooked or forgotten. No one should be so old they become effectively invisible, out of sight and out of mind. No one must be beyond the reach of a church built on Christ's example of seeking out the lost and the lonely. Many of those volunteering have seen their own parents through old age and witnessed how other residents in care homes were barely visited. One manager, when asked how many people received a regular visit, say at least once a week, said that of her 50 residents, only five, just 10%, received a weekly visit or more. Imagine that multiplied across the country, and that's a lot of loneliness. But where people are visited, it makes an enormous difference. Love is the great motivator of those reaching out to people in care. How do we keep the engine of that motivation going? Well, older Christians speak of how reading the Bible fuels their faith. The stories, the writings give voice to the faith of our forebears. We follow in their faithful steps. What we spend our time focusing on will determine the sorts of people we become, shapes our characters. As St Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Jesus himself asked so often of the people he met, what do you want me to do for you? The church we are shaping to be fit for the future, the virus is part of the forces shaping it, may be less about using words and more about demonstrating practical concern, concern not just for churchgoers, but for all. A now retired Church of England Bishop, Robert Patterson, once said, it's the gestures, the actions of a redeemed life that get through. If Christians are to communicate the gospel effectively, our words will have to be sparing and follow rather than precede our actions. That bears repeating. He said, if Christians are to communicate the gospel effectively, our words will have to be sparing and follow rather than precede our actions. Love, pray, act is what it comes down to. Love, pray and act. In that spirit, our prayers of intercession today are led from Kent by BRF Sanna Chaplain Church Lead, Julia Burton-Jones, and the Reverend Colin Terry, who leads the Anna Chaplaincy team for the Heart of Kent Hospice, based in the communities of Maidstone, Aylesford, Tunbridge, and Morling. Lord God, 
We pray for our world in the grip of a deadly pandemic. We lift to you, especially today, all who live, work and visit in our care homes. That staff may have the physical and emotional resources they need to protect and cherish the vulnerable older people in their care. That managers may receive advice and help in leading their teams. That care teams may be resilient and united in surviving the relentless pressures the virus has introduced. That residents living in care homes may know that they are loved by relatives and friends prevented from visiting regularly. And that families will be comforted in the pain of this enforced separation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church at this time of continued anxiety and uncertainty. We ask for wisdom for church leaders as they seek to make the best decisions for their congregations and communities. Guide them in the choices they face over how to lead us in worship. Inspire them in presenting the message of your love in new ways. We lift to you all who provide spiritual care to care home communities. Be with them in their frustration over being unable to minister in person. Reveal to them ways they can meet the needs of staff, residents and relatives in the homes they support. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, hear our prayers for parts of your world where there is conflict, where natural disasters have left many destitute and homeless. We pray for refugees and communities facing drought and starvation. Keep the plight of marginalised people in our hearts and minds, in spite of the pressures we face through the pandemic. Supply relief agencies with essential resources so they can help and provide hope in places of great need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we lift to you all who are dying at home, in hospices and in care homes and those who care for them. Give peace and assurance of your love to those in their final days. Help their caregivers to know how to ease their suffering and offer comfort. Renew daily their reserves of love and compassion. We hold before you those who have died, especially care home residents and staff we have lost this year to COVID-19. In our sorrow at their passing, may we stand firm in your promise of everlasting life remembering the ones we have lost with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. Your, your will be done, done on earth, earth as in, in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins. sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When filming 102-year-old Bob Waiten near his flat in the grounds of Brendan Care Nursing Home in Alton in 2010, little did we know that he would survive to be lauded as the oldest man in the world. 
Survived, though, is hardly the word, for Bob positively thrived into his extreme old age. According to Age UK, there are almost 14,500 centenarians in Britain. That number has increased by 85% over the last 15 years. Shortly before his 112th birthday, Bob recorded some of his own poems, which he had self-published in an anthology. Copies were sold in aid of ministry among older people. Here he is reciting a wry poem of his about love. The argument against love. If you do not want to suffer, do not love. Love neither friends nor family for they can be taken from you. They can cause disappointment, frustration and pain. They can reject your love and leave you desolate. What they say to you can hurt more than it was said by a stranger. For if you do not care, the barbed words fall to the ground. Love not the world the brightness of the sun, for night falls, the colour of the flowers, for they wither and die. Love not the sound of music, for the song comes to an end. Love not life over much, for youth and strength depart. Love not the high moments of pleasure, for they can be followed by dry crusts of time. Cherish no dreams, for they may never be realized. Strive for no goals, for they may forever remain out of reach. Attempt nothing, and fail in nothing. Trust no one, venture your life for no one, nor any cause. Give your heart to no one, and in so doing, much pain will pass you by. But what will you have left to remember? And oh, what you will have missed. Bob died this summer, peacefully and at home. He had been cared for in the last few months of his long and distinguished life as an engineer and missionary by staff from the nursing home opposite. Let us pray. Father, as the years advance and I cannot do the things I once did, help me to change the focus, as I would with a camera. From sweeping panoramas to the beauty of things seen close. Help me to enjoy the flowers on the windowsill, as I once loved a garden. The birds at a feeder, as the birds I used to see on country roads. The play on TV when theatre was a joy the cup of tea with a friend instead of a party, my small cosy room instead of my old house. Help me to realise that enjoyment lies not in things, but in my attitude to them. Grant me, I pray, the ability to find uncommon joy in common things. Amen. And our final blessing the love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one, surround and encourage us, today, tonight and forever. Amen.
Let me see. 